In our last lecture, we introduced the stakeholder perspective on CSR. In this podcast, we'll examine the citizenship perspective on social responsibility. Citizenship represents the final group of theories that argue collectively that organizations should be simply viewed as members of their communities. By being members of their larger community, there are different obligations that they face. So here's a view of the citizenship mix. It's a mix of people, environment, governments, and development. So to the extent to which organizations are socially responsible for meeting their legal, ethical, and economic responsibilities placed on them, they must also aim for higher standards, setting higher standards of living and quality of life in the communities in which they're operating while still being economically responsible. The citizenship mix a lot of times is used to refer to a tool of nine instruments used by organizations of all shapes and sizes. Think about it this way as a list of tools that could be selected that organizations could choose in order to put together its citizenship strategy. So the first of these is corporate giving. It's a generic term for the ethically motivated acts of giving material goods, services, products, money away in terms of donations. So even public organizations do this in a modern context. Consider the BBC's Children's Trust work as an example. A second example of citizenship activities are called social sponsoring. These transfer current marketing activities, so sponsorship, into a social domain where the organization gets the benefit of new audiences, public good arguments, as well as nonprofits get new financing channels. So by sponsoring a particular organization, sponsoring a nonprofit, strategic alliance in that case, organizations can blend their goals and end up doing better for their communities. Third, is cause-related marketing. Now, this, this is a marketing tool that provides for the purchase of a product or service being advertised so that the organization can get some proceeds as a donation or a social purpose. So, for example, Heineken advertises pretty consistently its water donations that for every purchase made, they donate X percent to water security in Africa. This is a good example of cause-related marketing. The aim is to improve its perception, the, the reputation, while also doing good for particular communities in need. Next are corporate foundations. Now these denote the grounds of foundations by businesses, typically speaking. So a kind of giving commitment or community involvement that is a central part of the organization's mission. So this is increasingly found among small and medium enterprises in particular. There's also nonprofit employee engagement, which notes citizenship through the investment of their employees and organizations, employees' time, expertise, and knowledge to support the voluntary work in and outside of normal business hours. Social commissioning is the acceptance of social organizations, and it describes targeted partnerships with nonprofit organizations in order to support public initiatives through business objectives. For example, partnering between organizations and education institutions to create apprenticeships. There are also what's called Commonwealth Joint Ventures, which is a community joint venture, a public-private partnership that denotes a joint enterprise between a nonprofit organization and a company in which both partners contribute resources and know-how that no one, neither of them could perform alone. We also see social lobbying, or lobbying for social concern, which refers to the use of contacts and influence of an organization for the objectives of charitable organizations or concerns specific within their communities. Then we see venture philanthropy or social risk capital, and this is denoting entrepreneurially active risk capital investment. So they invest for limited periods of time that 
involve projects of very specific money and expertise in nonprofits. So participation in societies is another important element of corporate citizenship. What's interesting in these is that any of these could be employed to support any perspective on social responsibility. So one of the strengths of the citizenship perspective is to provide ideas about how organizations can act in order to support broad social objectives. But when we're focusing on the strengths of these theories perspective, the citizenship perspectives, one of the principal benefits from the concept of citizenship is that it offers a very strong metaphor for an organization's place within its larger community. So in an era where organizations are increasingly thought of from a legal standpoint as people, the obligations of citizens also help to make it a powerful metaphor for social responsibility obligations. Second, in a citizenship framework, a strength is that it attaches a financial component to responsibility, that CSR initiatives have a financial requirement as being a member of a community. And third, the citizenship approach is adaptable in a global environment. To ask a multinational corporation, for example, to be a good global citizen has implications in establishing the relative value of its work and the impact of its work on different kinds of populations. And as much, though, as it's a strong metaphor for what an organization can be, the citizenship perspective also has meaningful limitations as a set of theories. First, typically the notion of citizenship is really a scattershot approach. It lacks clarity, specificity, and focus. So, for example, does an organization have to do all nine activities to be socially responsible? Or can it simply focus on a few? Can it focus on its core strengths? This isn't clear in the literature. Second, whereas the stakeholder approaches can be leaked with direct and measurable objectives, the citizenship approach does not yet have empirical support for the value of its outcomes to the organization or even to the society. Third, the citizenship approach is often linked with particular leaders or management objectives. When these values or principles change with different people, it's an approach that's often not sustainable. For example, Merck Pharmaceuticals founder strongly believed in solving social problems, so funded research into malaria treatment even though it was a financial loser. When he retired, the focus on this kind of citizenship also retired with him for the most part. So without strong advocates in positions of leadership, the citizenship perspective is often difficult to sustain. But what remains interesting about it is the metaphor, and it offers the, the citizenship mix, which gives good ideas for organizations wanting to employ social responsibility programs or initiatives, things that how they could approach it, programs that they could initiate.